Hello and welcome back to the Banner Saga 2. We're here. We came across an ambush, so we're going to stop it. So I'm gonna put him here so that way we can quickly kill them. Pass that. Uh, there's a lot of melee guys over here. I'm gonna put him up here to try to stop that guy. Mr. Mender can come up here as well. And I wish there was more barriers. Could do. Do work well as a pair. Oh, but in terms of turn order. Okay, so you and you would work best. So let's instead switch you guys. Go here. Stay here. Luden. So you should have Luden with you. Yeah, it makes it up even over here. And you can get some kills. Like, 
gave you willpower. Mark White, I'm sure that'll get you killed. Victory! Your foes lie dead at your feet and would regret ever walk crossing your path to their life. Okay, noun. 14. Okay. Could be worse. After having killed or run off the cragsmen, you return to the remaining clansmen at the godstone. Grabbing your belongings, your foot. It's something in the mud. You reach down to find the small skull with a yellow ribbon through its eyes. You toss the bag. You toss it in a bag without another thought. Okay. Follows rebirth. Baldringer renown plus five. Okay. Uh oh. Something's happening. Well, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, that's out the bog. Rain finally ceases, but the winds pick up. You squint into the gust and have a clear view of the vast plains ahead. There doesn't seem to be much of much out there, Ivory says. His tone conveys his wonder and concern in equal measure. Not much. Well, there's a town. Grundar. The ground shakes again, enough to cause the ox to strain at their lead in panic. Out here in the plains, nothing but open sky above, you feel remarkably vulnerable. Only a few trees around, and no mountains, Hawkins says in a wry tone. Looks like we only have to worry about the ground opening up beneath us. He shrugs and looks uh, at I mean, he shrugs at the look you give him. Okay. Gruntar almost looks forgotten by the rest of the world. Maybe those who live here have forgotten the rest of us too. In a field just outside of Grundar, the caravan spots several creatures you assumed were myth. I don't believe it. Are those? Two horseborn hold simple bronze weapons and stand guard over a few others who look wounded, unable, wounded, unable to rise. The size of the caravan makes them nervous. I have got to get a closer look. Ah, uh, don't. Ah, uh, don't. This could get ugly. Me or me too. Um, I'd say it's better not to. Maybe, but I've dreamed about meeting a horseborn since I was a little, since I was a girl. Odalif walks slowly towards the strangers, and you follow, showing no sign of aggression. They study you, but continue glancing around at the caravan, occasionally swishing their tails or tamping, or, or tamping the ground with their hooves. I'm Odalif. This is Rook. We're here to help, if you'd like. The male's tail swishes. You help? His voice sounds strained, and his mouth moves uncomfortably around the foreign words. Yes, help. Odalif steps aside as you wa wave to Evian for help. The female looks ag agitated and speaks in a long stream of consonants. The male responds to her and then turns to you. Different language. Help, roll each and each other's. Row eek, row each. Roek. Help Roek and others. I'll try. This is certainly a first. The standing horseborn step aside along Evian to approach the wounded fighters. With Evan and Juno tending the wounded, Roek and the care of and the other horseborn of the caravan settles down outside the scant town of Gunder. It appears the town is enjoying a small festival. Quite a few clansmen go over the hill to enjoy the sights and sounds, but soon return looking disappointed. They call us outsiders, Owen says. They don't want us interrupting their wheat harvesting festival, but the merchants don't seem to mind trading. The clansmen 
soon shrug it off and take renewed interest in the horseborn, in some in awe, others in disgust. Or caravan morale causes the minus two willpower penalty in battle, maintains sufficient supplies and rest in camp to improve morale. I will probably spend some time resting. First, let's talk to the king. Prince. Prince, close enough. The prince is acting even more standoffish than usual. You and Iber have caught him staring ahead and twisting the ring on his finger over and over. Yurisa quietly stands nearby. Glad to be heading home? Ludin turns to the two of you and offers a polite smile. Even after the chasm, would it surprise you if I said no? I thought you hated being so far from Airbrain. Is there anything you actually like? <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's where we're going. Uh, let's do one. Life on the trail hasn't won me over, but it's not all bad. It's even possible that I've learned a few things about leading people while out here. You and Ivor and Yursa are stunned to hear the prince talk this way. I've grown up in comfort and trained with scholars and fighters. I've never known anything else. Saying stuff like that won't make you any friends in this caravan. But that's just it. Among these clansmen, I've seen the differences. I think I understand them a bit more. That's great, Prince Luden. Oh yeah? What exactly do you understand? Nope, not using that. What do you plan to do with this understanding? Uh, one's good, three is fine. Let's do that's great. I'm glad you think so. I doubt my father w will. Yursa will agree. My father's not what you call open minded. The king's a hard man, has to be, but his son is his weakness. Ludin glares at her, but the archer only smirks. Can you tell me about King Minolf? The prince is the king's only weakness? I'll make my own opinion of the king when I meet him. Hmm, I'm trying to decide between three and one. Yes, you know, so I'd like to know about him because I haven't heard anything about him, but at the same time. I'll also probably do that. Let's do one. Can you tell me about him? I suppose, but there's not much to him. He's a king. He draws a hard line on nearly every topic. Talking to him is much like being told what to do. In fact, it's exactly that. Alet has said that about me at times. This isn't about being his son. You'll see. Kings usually have to make tough decisions and stick with them. Maybe someday you'll see why. I know. I just don't think he'll care for my ideas on treating with per with peasant commoners. What would you like? Com with peasant commoners. What would you like to be called? We are all people, Prince. Even you. Perhaps you're right. Just keep an open mind about your father, the way you'd like him to have towards your ideas. That's something I've never considered before. I'll think on it. As Prince Luden and Yursa walk away, you feel Ivor watching you. What? Do you believe half the nonsense you say? I think I sounded really wise just then. It sounded like you'd been practicing it for a while. That's fair. I'll work on it. The two of you share a smile before moving on. Oh, the awkward pauses. Okay, then there's this person to talk to. Think. You glance at Ubin, who snorts and smiles. We haven't seen him for a while. Scat, scat, scathat, scathatch is thanking you for helping his friend Bro Eeks, Drew, Dare Drewis, the other one, but she's not in a talking with Varl and humans mood. You're welcome. I'd like to meet Hawken. Or, I'd like you to meet Hawken. Scath. Uh. Scoth Atch's tail swats uh, his flanks and he bows his head towards Hawken. Varl. Man? Same herd? No. But we're lo no longer enemies. I haven't seen Horseborn in centuries. Last they knew, humans and Varl were at each other's throats. What brings you so far north? What happened to Ro each? 
How do you know our language? Uh, I'm more interested in what happened to him. Roich, brave fighter, protected food, hit many times. Hit, who was attacking? Skathach says many things in his other language. Trigashakanafe. His eyes go wide and he stomps the ground before pointing west. You look at Ubin. I don't have a clue, but clearly not a friend. Was it the people here, here in Gundar? Skatha Ska Thatch looks where Hawken is pointing. He shakes his head and points west again. The Varl King eyes Scotchash suspiciously. The Varl King eyes Scotchash su suspiciously. What brings you so far north? How do you know our language? Ska Thatch just stares at you. You talk like us. Where did you learn? Heard little trade with mans in mud. Okay, so the swamp people. I think he means our bog friends, the cragsmen. What brings you so far north? Scoth that Thatch looks confused by the question. So Ubin shows him the map pointing to Downland and Gundar. Food. Our planes break. Hakan sorts. Might be justice. Didn't they kill all the horses, Scrivener? His ancestors did, yes. But blaming folks for things that happened hundreds of years ago, hundreds of years before they were alive? You may as well accuse these humans around us for of starting the great wars. Have you found food you were seeking? Does that mean the horseborn have come north? Let's ask that. Many, not all, not all herds. Same herds fight herds. Many fights. So a bunch of different tie tribes, some are fighting each other. Sounds like no one looks the horseborn likes the horseborn, not even themselves. Ubin gives Huck on a sideways look. Others take food south to us, herd. His hooves scuff the ground during certain words. Hmm, must be part of their language. Some combination of words which probably pile on prefixes and suffixes along with maybe some hoof movement and tail movement. Sorry, I'm reading a book, uh, Art of Language Invention by David J. Peterson. Recommend it. Just, it's on my mind learning about this stuff. Just those two? What about you and the couple? Scothatch, row each. Druid, dread, dury, dread, ruy, dear, dury, dear, dury, stay. This herd, this herd help. We help this herd. Okay, so the people here help them, so they're helping back. Uh, thank you. Scathatch nods in a, mo in a movement that uses most of his upper body. Man, Barl, Horseborn, same herd. Funny. Ubin chuckles as the group separates. Okay. So then, first of all, let's check out the market. Renown gets three. Yes, that's quite nice. Uh, let's leave at least 20 for now. Uh, Mariners of Old would use the stones. The attacks never deflected. Don't care. Two break. That's level 9. 10. Uh, that's what we got earlier. Um, Christ level 3 plus 3 will. 2 strength plus 25 times 2 strength damage. Nope. Let's go to heroes and upgrade someone. Okay, so you. Wait, the horseborn charges forward and tramples enemies and attacks from behind. Then we suffer strength damage, so that's like that archer attack. Sorry, earlier. They go through them, they go and attack backwards. Looks like they use a flail. Ooh, hit and run. Horseborn takes normal movement, then can attack or take another action. Once the action is complete, he can move again up to three spaces. No willpower may be spent on the second move. Uh, you. You do javelin toss, and while moving each will 
It'll power the horseborn spend silencer to travel two tiles instead of one. Wow, that's pretty good. And then row each. Uh, the horseborn delivers the devastating kick with his powerful horse legs, damaging the target's armor and sending him flying across the battlefield. Eh. Tend to. Eh, might as well read the bios too while we're here. A duty bound trader dedicated to his herd, Scothatch is more trusting of strangers than the majority of his kind. While most humans think of Horseborn as a myth, uh, Scathatch has been interacting with the Krang's man of the South Bogs often enough to temper his fear. Okay. A fearless fighter, Ro each almost never backs down from a confrontation. At 10 years of age, his pride to culture and short average lifespan drive him towards boldness. It's the only way he will become the leader of his herd before he's too old. His mate Dread Ryu unfallen, unfailingly supports him and encourages him. And then Dread, Dread Ryu. Dread Ryu is almost cautious, is more cautious and ready to attack than most usually concerned with his betrayal than most. Usually concerned with betrayal from anyone, but her mate Ro each her family was ambushed and murdered by previous friendly tri previously by a previously friendly tribe, leaving her with a lifelong mistrust. Okay. <sighs> I wish I was spending more time looking at the art in the game rather than reading the subtitles, because it does look beautiful. The game. So nice. Okay, I was going to promote Ivar, level. Wait, do we already have a level six? No, I should promote Drakon to level seven. Four points available. Ooh. Uh. Hmm. Nope. That's not what I want. I want that. Uh. I would like to resist strength damage. But I'd also definitely like to resist the armor. Seems fine. It means that Soul 7 protects from death unless strength is 1. Oh, that's the other one he got. Protects from death unless strength is 1. Minus three armor, thirty-five percent dodge, strength attacks. So basically, you have to get one health before you can die. I'm gonna do this one on hack on. Make sure he's up here. So this should be my core. This is my core group of what I want. Eagle and Evind are nice. Grissom would be nice to promote at some point. Maybe when I have enough uh, stuff for that. Ivor would be up here, but right now he's injured. Let's bring in... Let's let you two in. Do you seem interesting? Okay, then I want to rest for two days. So rest. Rest. I'll try resting for one more day to improve morale. Okay, let's leave. Onwards and... Now that Ro each has had a chance to heal, two of the Horseborn people are heading south to deliver some supplies to their people. What crazy idea is in your head, Scrivener? With the world falling apart around us, there may not be another chance to track down south. Listen to yourself, the world is breaking. Aaron's free to do what you they want, but you will be missed. I mean, I think he did mention wanting to write down his own history of the world. He's free to do it, and I'd be interested. Especially if that means he'll come back someday. Remember that when it comes time to dealing with Druga as well, if he wants to depart by the gods, let him. Then be safe, Ubin, and join us again if you can. You know where we're going. Don't worry about me. Just make sure you're alive to see this thing through to Air to Arborain. Farewell. Scrivener says a few more goodbyes before departing with the Horseborn. 
He'll have some stories to tell. That would be a cool game to get. Or just book or something. Actually, let's look at the map. Oh, oh, guess something's happening. I'm going to end the video here. We'll continue next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the rest of the channel. Have a good day and goodbye.